Today, we're gonna to talk about how you do a UX design process. Now, many of you out there have messaged me, commented on my videos and spoken to me directly on the fact that you really, really wanna understand how you actually go about doing UX design and what is the process with which you use. Now, for many of us, we may have some real understanding of UX design already, but there might be others of you who might be feeling a bit like, okay, how do I do this? Now, for me, the way I go about doing my process is I look at it in three simple ways. One, it's defining the brand, two, it's defining the user. Three, it's defining the goals that we want to achieve for the business and the goals we want to achieve for the user. And then it's really looking at those three and then expanding on those three in other ways going forward using UX design methods or best practices as some may say. Now the first thing when it comes on to defining the brand, you basically want to look at that brand and basically look at it over across about these four or five different areas. And then from understanding the brand, you then want to go on to prioritize what becomes the most essential based upon the different themes that the brand wants to communicate. So as you begin to look at that brand, you then can create what is called a brand statement. You can say, this is what the brand is trying to communicate as its main message or primary goal going forward. Now, this is just the beginning of what you're trying to achieve. But going forward, don't fixate yourself in the statement so heavily that as things may change or as new insights come upon the table, you may see a need to change that statement so it suits the needs of that business going forward. Uh, the key thing you want to have as a designer, especially what we call soft skills, you want to be flexible, you want to be adaptable. You want to be somebody who really, really understands not only have we concreted ourselves in something in the beginning that we can all align to so that sometimes if any wild card, wild card ideas come on the table you can say hold up we've agreed to this you've signed to this are we changing this are we not changing this but you want to be somebody that's flexible so that say there's a better business goal or a better statement that you can create that everybody can align to you want to be flexible enough to change it and adapt to that so that as a business everybody feels involved you as the designer in your design team can feel involved in this plus the business and their needs can feel like everybody is working in synergy. The next thing you want to do is you want to define your users. Now the way you define your users is you create what is called user profiles or some, some may say personas but I like the word user profiles. Now your user profiles will take into context who the main users of that product or service is going to be and try and create as much backstory information about that person as possible. So you may look at the age, sex, gender, race, location. Then you may look at their backstory. Did they go to university, college? Are they working, not working? And then you try and see, okay, how do we meet their needs? And then after good observation, dialogue, you can then focus on how do we ex exceed those needs going forward? What tools can we implement? What features can we add into our product that can exceed the needs of our user? So that that user could then, from the exceeded needs or from the needs met and then expectations being like, wow, this is something I didn't expect. They could then do what we call as a referral. They can then refer it onto somebody else because word of mouth most of the time is the best way to promote any product, right? So as long as you can find ways from those profiles, you want to create maybe two, three, um, you don't want to create too much because sometimes it can get confusing depending on the type of team you're in. But I believe um, three to five or three to six some, sometimes, but three to five are a good enough amount of profiles to create to get a really good product or sense of direction from where you're going. And the reason why I say keep it minimal initially is because later down the line, when you do usability testing and you start to meet real people, 
the assumptions you've created from the profiles, you may be able to realize that, wow, some of our assumptions were not true. Plus, you can test your user profiles against quantitative analysis on apps like Google Analytics. Then you can see, ah, oh, do some of the assumptions that we have match the analytics that we're getting, which, is, which we call our raw or hard data. Now, that's if you have Google Analytics to play with. If you don't have Google Analytics to play with, then you're focusing on your assumptions and then you use usability testing down the road to test those assumptions to make sure that they're all working out correctly. Once you've built your user profiles, you then want to define the goals of that business. Now, to define the goals, I like to look at it in four ways. Three ways specifically are the main ways you want to focus on is the efficiency. How do we make that product as efficient as possible? Not only that, how do we help the business to be as efficient as possible as well? So you can split up the efficiency section into another two. Revenue, what are the ways that we are going to generate revenue from this product? And what are any potential future ways that we can develop revenue for that product or service going forward? The third thing you want to do is you want to look at awareness. What marketing strategies are we going to use? Are we going to use Facebook ads, Instagram ads? Are we going to use print media? Are we going to use digital media? Media? Are we going to use events? Are we going to go to marketing shows? What are the ways that we're going to generate some awareness about our product? Now, the fourth thing I like to look at for me personally is culture. How can we help to influence the culture of that business? Are there any strategies that we could help implement within their internal teams? For, for example, agile methodologies that you can help to teach um, of a way to deliver products to market or a way to deliver any services that they have on offer or that they're doing or they're working on internally. Could there be some strategic things that you could implement to help allow that business or the culture of that business to be improved as a result of your influence? Many a times I've worked with businesses and sometimes you are called in to to work on something specific but you never know through sometimes the understanding that you may have you may help be able to shape or give some ideas on how you can influence culture once you have defined those goals one thing i like to do is i like to create a customer journey map now a customer journey map allows me to look at every single stage of a potential journey from end to end now what is the end of that journey or desired goal and what is the beginning then i look at what's the highest pleasure that we can give this customer and what's the lowest frustration that this customer could experience at every single stage of the journey. Once we have mapped it out and we chart that journey initially, we try and look at ways going forward that we could make that journey even more pleasurable for that user. So customer journey maps or customer experience maps as some may say will really help you to understand at every stage of the journey what you can actually help to improve for that customer and if they are using your app especially for, the, for those doing app design you could look at potentially what screens are they seeing at each stage and then ask what's the goal of that page and you can ask what can we do to improve the feeling that the user may have as they interact with it on every single stage of the journey. In the descriptions below, I'm going to give you a lot more information about the UX design process and I'll also connect this to my blog article on my website where you can find out a lot more information about UX design as well. Thank you for watching another episode of Wallace TV. If you've liked what you've seen today, then please comment below. Also, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also contact me on Facebook at Leif underscore Wallace and on Twitter at Leif Wallace or my Instagram as well is Leif underscore Wallace so please get in touch with me let me know your thoughts and also I'd love to know what else you'd like to see going forward thank you everyone have a good day and you take care and if you've liked this video today don't forget to download my free 25 point UX design checklist it's really great. It's a checklist that will allow you to go through some of the key things that we may forget as UX designers. And even if you are a seasoned professional, it's helpful. And if you're a beginner, then it's definitely helpful for you. So download it for free and definitely go on my Facebook and just contact me and let me know what you think about it going forward. Take care.